Hello friends, today we are going to discuss curriculum through EVS textbook and myself Dr. Amit Ahuja, Assistant Professor from University School of Education, Gurgobin Singh Indraprasa University, Delhi. Curriculum through EVS textbook generally provides the frameworks of what should be taught. It's a skeleton that refers to some boundaries, whatever is to be taught. And students need to be actively involved in all activities. Yes, otherwise the curriculum will be dull in nature. The curriculum should be dynamic in nature. So, to focus upon the harmonious development of the personality of the child by focusing upon the emotional, moral, intellectual, cognitive, spiritual aspects of the personality of the child so that a harmonious developmental aspect may be characterized. It is important that in the curriculum, the activities should be designed in such a manner that our students are definitely involved. They are not passive observer recipients, but they are active participant of that activity because ultimately learning is for them. They are not for learning. Then, curriculum through EVS textbook also focuses that there should be child-based interest and priorities in the curricular aspects. That is, by giving due respect and acknowledgement to the child interest in designing the curricular activities and giving them priorities also over a period of time after proper curricular evaluation also, so that a dynamic curriculum is developed over a period of time. Then curriculum should be contextualized by child's experiences. Whatever has been experienced by the child by proper assessing its pros and cons, what it led to, what are its future outcomes, is it significant enough for future also. By assessing the aspect with respect to all these domains, an experience or experiences can be incorporated into the curriculum so that a context is provided to the curriculum. Because text is not so important, but context is very important. Then curriculum through EVS textbooks should focus upon knowledge construction. Information is transferred, information is processed, but knowledge is constructed. That is the basic premise of constructivism. And this knowledge construction must be differentiated from the knowledge being passed on. We use the term in a wrong sense when we say knowledge is transferred from one generation to another. Actually, knowledge is constructed by individually. This is information that is being transferred from one generation to another. Then, with respect to these curricular aspects, children should be supported in constructing knowledge by drawing upon their diverse experiences. Only then, the activities become meaningful and the derived knowledge can be assimilated into the existing one. Otherwise, to deduce some knowledge, something knowledgeable in isolation without utilizing past experience is not a knowledge in itself own. It's only a bits of information which stays over a very short period of time. In classes, learning experience must be planned to provide scope for knowledge construction. Yes, with respect to future perspective, learning experience must be designed, organized and planned so that knowledge construction becomes a continuous process. It does not stop. It's not temporary. It's not time bound. It's not short lived but it's an ongoing process. Then, curriculum should focus upon experiential learning, that is hands-on activities, learning by doing and activity approach are incorporated and hence experiential learning is promoted. Hands-on learning means that at concrete level what the child is able to do. Hands as a sense are being involved or not, because if they are not so able to do so, then it's not an activity, it's not a learning, then it becomes a ritual. Learning by doing means, is the child being involved directly in the process of learning? Because don't focus on the situation that lead to rote learning or teach them by teaching. Teach them by learning by doing. Then another is activity approach. It should not be based on theoretical citations, etc. Something, activity, some kind of activity should be there so that some actions are performed by them. But don't expect right results, desired results always. 
so by growing by this way or that way ultimately the child is able to learn and derive a substantial degree of knowledge curriculum through us textbooks also focuses that a variety of teaching methodology should be used for effective active learning so don't focus at least on lecture method lecture come demonstration method project method another kind of activity oriented methodologies can be incorporated so that learning becomes an interesting process it doesn't become dull second activities should awake interest curiosity and provide information yes why should i do this what will happen if i don't do this what will happen if i do this etc if such kind of questioning is taking place then at least over a period of time the child may develop an interest in some unknown activities also either to unknown activity also if a child is familiar then child may have uh, sufficient degree of interest and may participate in that activity with zeal also curiosity what happens that is when we proceed from known to unknown is there a degree of curiosity among learner also the teacher must ensure this because if we don't have curiosity that it may not lead to some significant learning on their part also and provide information also yes information must be provided in an activity so that scope of knowledge construction is there because information is ultimately to be processed by the child only then knowledge construction will take place otherwise the activities may go meaningless teaching methodologies should enable systematic processing for the information yes information must be provided in an organized manner so that subsequent processing on their part may take place systematically and hence knowledge generation may become an organized act otherwise by providing active information in jumbled manner no processing will take place and hence no knowledge construction then teaching methodologies should help in formulating codes of ethics and behavior yes ultimately we have to survive in a certain society we have contribute towards that society so a definite code of conduct ethics and behavior is expected on the part of a learned individual so activities should also focus on, on the ethical issues also teaching methodologies should lead to positive action to improve the world around yes by being a responsible member of the community or of this entire world one has to take efforts to initiate positive actions in improving the world around him or her then curriculum through evs textbooks must be designed to forge an integrated perspective that draws upon insight from life sciences physical sciences and social sciences yes only then evs becomes a way of learning because environmental studies is not a subject it's a way of learning a process of learning in which life sciences physical sciences that is sciences in a broad term and social sciences are clubbed together so you can see evs is not a subject in itself own like others then curriculum through evs textbooks aims at preparing the learners to become global citizen that is things are not local now things are globally now we are living in this global world so if pollution affects our country our society then it affects other continents also so how to get rid of that terrorism the biggest problem of this contemporary world almost entire world is in its grip so things have become global in nature so we as a global citizen should think upon them also and this is possible when curriculum is able to develop an ability among its learner like is the learner able to think critically yes when we think critically about something then there is a scope of knowledge generation otherwise we have to accept the things as such there is no question of reasoning no logic so no knowledge generation so criticism but a healthy criticism must be there then is the curriculum able to develop sensitivity yes sensitivity about the environmental aspects that is is the child able to develop a certain degree of concern about the environmental aspects also or not or otherwise it's written there why should i do so go ahead with that it should not be practiced in that manner the child should develop a concern how can i minimize such negativity with respect to environmental hazards around me what's my role in that by being a responsible citizen should be inculcated among them since beginning then curriculum must aim at respect for the natural and socio cultural environment man by being at the highest 
position or the ladder of development should also think about the welfare of other non-humans also, animals around him or her also, about their protection also. Like snake and mongoose game in other Southeast Asian country are organized for amusement. But fortunately in our country, these are considered as animal abuse. So, merely using other non-humans for our pleasure should not be the aim of our society or of our profession. Man should protect, conserve, give security to other non-human animals also of this world. So, give a respect for the natural environment. Socio-cultural environment means, are we able to understand diversity? Are we able to accept others with different views? But ultimately we say, we have to tolerate others. No, there should not be tolerance, there should be acceptance. There should not be tolerance of opposite view. There should be acceptance of opposite view in the sense that that person can be right also. Why I am only I always right? Or if I am right, okay, let it be. Then what's wrong in that? So we can arrive at a common consensus and I, because I am right, I can convince the other to be right. Or this is my stand, what's yours? Ultimately, we should accept the things as such. So what we, what we should do is that we should respect for socio-cultural environment in this sense also. Then, curriculum through EVS textbooks emphasizes upon teachers' active participation and innovativeness for effective teaching and learning to take place. And it's, it has been given a central position. Yes, without teachers' involvement, by being a facilitator, co-learner, or also as an constructor of knowledge at his end also is mandatory for meaningful learning to take place. Is the teacher innovative, dynamic, curious like students also? Because who is a teacher? Who is a learner? Actually, teacher is an advanced learner or a learner who is an advanced stage of learning because of his chronology or his or her experiences. Otherwise, there is nothing like teacher, nothing like student. So, by being an advanced learner, the teacher should be innovative, curious, eager to know about the things also. Only then a true spirit of learning among learner is developed. Then, curriculum through EVS textbooks must focus upon the issues that pertain to local, regional, national, international perspective. So that a spirit is developed that the things are not confined within common boundaries, within local boundaries. The things have gone worldwide. Problem of you is mine and mine is yours also. If today I am safe but you are insecure, let it be at my head. No, I should also have a concern with that. What will happen if I face this situation tomorrow also? Then curriculum through EVS textbooks should aim at developing a holistic or integrative perspective of the environment where child lives in. That is a holistic approach is to develop among the children and it should work out in an integrated manner that is it should not work in in an isolation that is from what aspects of sciences or social sciences I may deduce or I may use in conserving and protecting my environment that should be the concern of teaching of today's child then curriculum should motivate students to explore understand appreciate and value the environment Curriculum should not be static, it should be dynamic in the sense that it should develop, inculcate a sense among the students to explore, that is don't accept the environment as such, explore the environment as such, understand the environment, what it is, what it comprises, how can I improve this, what's wrong there with that environment, etc. Appreciate, yes, I'm born into that environment, so rather than cursing, or escaping from the environment, it's better to appreciate and work out for its betterment and value the environment. Yes, I belong to this environment, this is mine, I am gaining this much from this environment, environment is in turn giving this to me, so why should not I preserve my environment? Curriculum must support the children in deriving meaningfulness and pleasure of learning through connecting with their immediate environment. That is meaningfulness pleasure, joy, enjoyment are to be developed, are to be inculcated, 
are to be generated among children by linking them with their environment that is immediate in nature that is not far away otherwise how a child will derive a pleasure continuously because if as a teacher i am able to link my text my learning with the immediate environment then there are better chances that a child will be able to develop pleasure over a period of time curriculum must be based on child interest and priorities yes it should not be beyond that it should not be textual it should have definite context and it should be contextualized by child experiences and must have formal as well as informal structures formal means it should have definite course content also but informal structure means it should have a space for their experiences also it should be based on environment that gives warm security trust to them yes environment in turn gives them something what's that warm sense of security and trustworthiness to the child evs curriculum must lay foundations of academic learning that's true but it must lead to learning for life so that a spirit of learning is developed over a period of time and it does not end in itself all evs should be taught as an integrated course for the entire primary stage yes it should not be taught for restricted to particular class but it should be taught as a holistic subject in an integrated manner for the entire primary stage so friends what we have learned now that curriculum must be dynamic enough in nature that must provide experiences to the child and those experiences must be enjoyable for them experiences must be used in an however in, in an informal manner to contextualize the curriculum spirit of concern must be developed among the children for the environment so that environment in turn may give them security warmth over a period of time because ultimately man is for environment environment is for man thank you very much